Hey. Hey. Nice. That's good. It's Fonzie-ish. Yeah, and then I did the Zoom freeze. <laughs> you did the Zoom freeze. <laughs> a little Fonzie. -ish. It's definitely Fonzie is because it's a Jew trying to sound Italian. So <laughs> perfect. <laughs> and doing a pretty good job. Thank you very much. Uh I'm better at the accent than I am at day to day being a Jew. So <laughs> it's Alex and Jim. Alex and Jim. You may remember analyze Billy Joel lyrics. That's right. Episode. Five hundred. That's right. Nope. Five. Um, yeah. Hundred and three. Okay. But I think uh more it could be a 105 because I think that uh so I think you're actually remembering well we did that Miley Cyrus thing. Right. Was it properly numbered? And then we also did the one that's gonna hasn't been posted yet, but it will be by the time you see this. So the, yeah, so it has been posted about my visit to New York. Right. And that's not an official number either. Oh, okay. So that's how good a memory you have. You're like, I know I you're saying it. Yep. I remember you're saying, the unofficials. Yeah, you're saying it's 103, but I feel like it's 105. <laughs> that's what you thought. That's very generous of you. And you were right. You nailed it. If we did one every week, like we said we were going to, this would be 500. That, oh, Lord, yeah. <laughs> We did one every week. We would now be talking about bread lyrics because we'd be wildly right. done. Ah, <laughs> uh, I wish I could remember one bread song. Uh, I found a photograph. <laughs> oh, the diary. The diary, yeah. yeah. The diary underneath a tree. Yeah, underneath a tree, start a thing around me. Yeah, that was pretty good. Pretty good little tune. David Gates, right? New bread. Huh? We should do bread. We should do a cover band of bread called Gluten Free Bread. <laughs> Perfect. I wouldn't mind at some point talking about some bread songs that would fit perfectly fine in what we do. Absolutely. Because this is not meant to be enjoyed. <laughs> <laughs> or consistent. Right. Oh, Lord. It really is not meant to be at all. Yes. If this exists for two reasons. One, the most one of the most important is Billy Joel is amazing. Yeah. And isn't it weird to have the rest of the world finally agree with you and I? That's so strange to me. Let's talk about that for a second. Um, when somebody told me, like, oh, TikTok loves Billy Joel, everybody's doing all these memes to Vienna. Apparently, Vienna was the hot song that caught on with the TikTokers. Then I was like, now I truly don't understand TikTok. What? I never had a chance before, but now I really don't get it. And also, that's the song they picked. Huh. I mean, we love it. It's our probably number one or top five for sure. Yeah. Listen, you ask me on any given day, that'll be my answer. My other answer will be scenes from an Italian restaurant. Yeah. But if I say scenes from an Italian restaurant and you went, so not Vienna, I'd probably go, well, probably Vienna. <laughs> Vienna. It's hard. And if you say scenes from an Italian restaurant to most people, they're like, I don't know that song. And then you say Brenda and Eddie. And they go, oh, yeah. That song. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was called Brenda and Eddie. No. No. They made a new video a few years ago that's really good if you haven't had a chance to watch it. I have not. But it's incredible. Like suddenly people are of one mind that Alex and Jim were right this whole effing time. I We got through to them. Gee, we did it. That's what happened. That's why we, we did, did the it. show. God. It's, we are the Marty McFly of the timeline. It's such a strange thing because it's like, I don't know if you remember 2016. Sure. When the Cubs won the World Series. Yes. And then a bad thing happened right away. Yes, it did. And it made me so mad because and in my mind, I was like, I'd have been okay with the Cubs not winning. Right. I'll trade you. Yeah. I'll trade you back. And okay. this feels like that. that like, oh, that's a beautiful thing. Why is the rest of the world like this? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Do, you, do you want down pumpkin? 
This is my little girl. Say hello wow. to everybody. Hello. Now, she can't say anything because then we'd have to pay her. Right, right. Not in the budget. Mm -mm. Beat it, dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's incredible to me. Now, the second reason we do this show is because I need as many excuses to hang out with you. That's it. Right. I just love my friend Alex, and this has been a really good way for us to spend time together. It's true. It's been very effective. And it's yeah. real life time together. Oh, which was just the best. Drinking so a bar with you was so nice. Uh. <laughs> you know, I like drinking in a bar with a guy I know is not an alcoholic. <laughs> yeah, that's nice, isn't it? Yeah. You're like, well, you don't have to wonder how it's going to end. You're yeah. Like, oh, yeah cool. We'll pay for our three beers. That's how it ends. Yeah. And it'll, <laughs> and it'll have to think, worry that I'm doing something to you by letting you go there. Right. Like, I'm not doing a bad thing by keeping you company at that bar you're not supposed to be at. <laughs> yeah, there's no hijinks or shenanigans. Now, you're not going to guess yet, but this clue, uh -huh. when I was searching for it, and this has not happened on Google to me before, or at least very recently, uh -huh. where I asked for a very specific kind of picture, and it gave me very intense pornography. Oh, no. And I don't search for very intense pornography. Wow. I'm not, I'm not against very intense pornography. That's I'm fine that it exists if everyone's good in game and there's somebody gets a paycheck and that's fine with me but i'm gonna tell you the clue the thing i asked for later after you get this oh okay and then you're gonna explain to me why did they show me so many things <laughs> okay because it didn't make sense to me not relevant okay we'll see maybe maybe It'll be a good uh, thought experiment. This is my friend, uh, Robert Yasamura. He will, well, if he, if the comic before him happens to be a comedian who goes, I looked up weird porn, and which is a terrible premise. Such a lazy premise. Um, he, sa he says, and it's very funny, but he only does it if the comic before him does that. He said, the comic before talked about finding weird pornography. There is no such thing. I don't care what you're into, there's pictures of it. True. Think of the weirdest thing you can think of, and he'll do, let's do improv. Give me a subject. And he'll tie uh, it. He goes, that's out there. <laughs> so you're, you're not clever. You didn't make anything up. People have been doing weird stuff with fluids forever. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So category on whatever your favorite site is. Yeah. And I love that he has that in his pocket. Not for a heckler, but for a bad comic. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think that's tremendous. Fantastic. When you can burn the other comics. Yeah. Safely. <laughs> uh, it's one of my faves. One of my faves. And I like it when it happens to me. Yeah. It's you know, I, it burns. Yeah. I did. Well, years ago, I'll tell this and we'll get into what you're here for. Mm. So don't leave yet. But I'll tell you this thing a comic said to me once. I did a bit about gay marriage back when that was a kerfuffle. And, uh -huh. and I was on the right side of history. Let's just be clear what the premise was. Good job. And then afterwards, I did this joke about the homeless. And it was about how a guy will still bum a quarter. A guy will still say, can I bum a quarter? Which, right. And then the joke was always, I think that's why they're homeless, because they haven't adjusted for economics. Because okay. they just don't understand basic economics. Because I understand that in the 30s, if a dude gave you a quarter, you could go see a movie, get a sandwich, and uh, ride home in a cab. But now, I so I think a lot of that's on you, just not understanding economics. I keep it up with it. Yeah. So that was the premise, along with some other jokes. But then the comic afterwards go said, "I'll give it up for Jim. Very liberal and progressive, standing up for the rights of the gay community." Sticking it to the homeless for some reason. Ah, and, yeah. it was, <laughs> and I felt bad. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, you, you had to go like, yeah, good note. Because I'm not a, I'm not a monster, so I felt bad. 
Yeah, you uh, you were enthralled to the joke. Yep. Yeah. So last bit of trivia about that. That's the last time I did that joke on stage. <laughs> I thought he was right. I was just like, yeah, you're right. I uh, I had a joke in the monologue this week that I a little bit felt bad about. And it's one of those, sometimes you wonder like, oh, is the person this news story about going to hear this joke? And this time, I, usually that's our gauge. We're like, if they heard this joke, would they be sad? Yeah. And, and this week I was like, ah, I'm going to throw that out the window. Uh, there was a 97-year-old woman in California, got her high school uh, diploma, graduated oh. from high school. And the joke was, wow, 97. She must be so dumb. <laughs> and that was it. It took her that long oh. to graduate from high school because she was dumb. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we, Seth said the first part of the joke and like this 97 year old woman finally graduated, graduated from high school, got her diploma and the audience started clapping. <laughs> and he was like, oh no, I wish you hadn't clapped. <laughs> Because there's more to the joke. And they just did it over again. And then they laughed really loud. <laughs> so it's like, okay, you don't care about this lady either. Uh, the Tim Bennett joke. I don't know if you know this joke. He, he said, you know, you can teach uh, chimpanzees sign language. Yeah. Which some people think proves just how smart chimpanzees are. I think it just proves that deaf people are fucking stupid. <laughs> Much harder, much harder joke. Brutal, brutal joke back when he used to do, because his stand-up was always, oh. he was always funny, but it was always unpleasant. <laughs> yeah, I think he reveled in the unpleasantness, which is a genre. Oh, my Lord, yeah. Had he decided to stick with stand-up, I'm sure he would have felt, figured out a way to Jimmy Carr it and find a way to get people to love him. Yeah, get people on his side. But he didn't do it long enough because I just don't think it was his passion. But Lord, he would write these jokes now and then I'd go, oh, Lord, I love everything about that. <laughs> uh, so Billy Joel, if you huh. he did a song. This is kind of a bottle episode, but I'm I'm considering it an official number because he does sing the song. And yep. it's a Billy Joel-esque song, but he did not write it. Yeah, so we are not analyzing billy joel lyrics in this case we will be analyzing the lyrics but they're not his they're not his and i won't be saying who sung it because i forgot to look it up <laughs> <laughs> or who wrote it yeah who wrote it we know who sung it oh i mean yes i won't say that <laughs> um <laughs> The well, dogs are very. You, you, did you notice that because this is a, a song sung by a dog, and your dogs are very into this? Oh yeah, this is their favorite episode. <laughs> this one's for the dogs. Yes. All right, you can come back in, but then you have to stop going out. Right. <laughs> Good luck fine. to you. You're a silly boy. Do you want to get on the bed? Yeah. All right. So. I put it with. We'll put this down so you can get on the bed if you want to. There you go, friend. All right. I put down the ramp for the dog. That's entertainment. So the song is Why Should I Worry from Oliver and Company. Yes. And I'm going to give a quick critique of something I find funny about the song, which is Billy Joel will often do a song that's meant to sound like another in the style of. We talk yeah. about. Yeah. Lots of in the styles of like the Mick Jagger recent discovery, which is pretty great. Or yeah. he's doing something that's supposed to be like an old Motown song. Obviously, he does a lot of those. Sure. Um, songs where we speculate he's really just being the Beatles. Right. Um, this song sounds like it's in the style of a Billy Joel song but written for a Broadway show about Billy Joel. It's very yes. weird. It's very confusing. Um, I did, I think I've told you, I have, somebody said um, a very, a thing that rang very true. And they said that Billy Joel is musical theater for straight guys. Yeah. And a lot of the songs really are like 
musical theater songs, and they they are not gay. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a gay bent in any way. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's uh for us. Yeah. Did we want that? I don't know. <laughs> I I'm totally on board with that, and so I noticed the part where I'm like, this is like a Broadway song, but not quite. Uh huh. And that kind of bugged me a little bit. I'm like, well, if you're gonna make it a Broadway song, make it a Broadway song. Yeah. And if you're really gonna lean into Billy Joel, lean into it more. Although I think they did that fine. Now, have you seen the movie that this is from? I have seen clips that this movie is from. Yeah, I have not seen the whole movie. Yeah, me neither. I don't know if it was like a hit. Or... It was not. That seems right. You know what should should happen with this then? In Billy Joel style, it should become some people's weirdly favorite animated movie. Yeah, it should become a weird cult animation hit. Yeah, just lots of people, and particularly like certain kinds of dudes from New York really love this movie. <laughs> that could happen. Yeah. That could be happening. It's also got... The other thing in the lyrics, which we'll dig into in a second, it's very much got a vibe of like, we want to sound like we're from New York, which is kind of funny. Always. Now that I live here, it's extra funny. Right. Uh, most people don't talk like that, but then some people really do. Yes. That's extra great. Now, on my trip, the guy who served me chick parm talked like that for sure. Hello. Producer. Yay. Nice to see you. You too. We can't get off the terrace. Yeah. Why would you? Why would you? Yeah. I'm sure there are going to be times when you can't be on it because it's going to be too cold. But right now, exactly. enjoy the shit out of that. We're trying to get sick and tired of it and it's not working. <laughs> My backyard. My backyard. Never get sick of it. Great. Had a coffee today. The sunsets are amazing. The sunrises are great. What a world. As a Jew, sunrise, sunset. We love them both. There's <laughs> a musical reference for you, huh? Immortalized in song. Yep. Um, the beginning of the song, before we talk about it, it's got this, which is a good Billy Joel thing to do. Yes. And a good yeah. dog thing to do. <laughs> yeah, dogs love that. Yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> Was there a dog? Chopper. Ah, Chopper. Nice. It's too bad we're not doing Good Night Saigon right now. <laughs> Honestly, it's not too bad. It's distant enough and you're, I don't know, something's good about the audio. The audio is fine. Amazing. So you have nothing. Yeah. And the locale, uh, which we should point out, new studio. We moved. We moved. New studio. Yeah. Uh, we're 0. 0.2 miles from where we used to be. Yeah. Um, I can go outdoors. That I stop going outdoors. Yeah. Um, uh, still moving in. Lots to be done. Yeah. But you know. And good luck to Tim and Doug, who now host their show where they analyze Elton John at that the old uh, studio. The old location. Yep. Yeah. I just handed them the keys yesterday. Yep. Congratulations! I hope you have as much success as we have. Yes. That's one of that's one of those uh, Chinese curses, isn't it? That's right. <laughs> you live in interesting times. May you have the Jewish one. My favorite Jewish curse is may you have lots of money and lots of in laws. <laughs> isn't that great. great? Really great. Uh, so he starts out, which I really like. And uh, here, let me get the lyrics back up. I had them up. Why did I close the window? That doesn't make sense. Oh, uh, you're self-sabotaging. All right, that's me. Eh? That's me. Another, another good Jewish thing for you. <laughs> uh, here, right away, I'll start just because I find it really funny. Right away, he's letting us know uh, this is a New York dog. Everybody. Yeah, really funny. One minute I'm in Central Park. Oh, Central uh -huh. Park. that's a New York thing. Then I'm down on Delancey Street. <laughs> From the Bowery to St. Mark's. Now, the Bowery still exists, right? 
Yeah, it's but, the name of the street, at least. But, you know, <laughs> it's funny what an old-timey reference it is as far as putting it in a musical. Yeah. You're it's going, not what it used to be, obviously. Yeah. Now it's, like, very expensive to live there. <laughs> yeah. From, if, you, if anybody remembers the Bowery Boys, then you're definitely not listening to this because you don't understand how the computer works. <laughs> no. Plus, you died. Yeah, you died a while ago. A while ago. From the Bowery Street to St. Mark's, there's a syncopated beat. Ooh. Um, nothing wrong with it. Nothing, nothing wrong with it. I do love that. Um, it does remind me of uh, Big Man on Mulberry Street. Yeah. Naming locations, and what happens now? Um, uh, when I, now that I live here, um, uh, I mentally travel the path in the song mm -hmm. it's very funny in this case because from central park to delancey street is a long long way to go and wildly different vibes the bowery to saint mark saint mark's is almost in the bowery <laughs> <laughs> um so it's that would be a weird afternoon yeah i would start on delancey and end up in central park that's a good plan yeah but i'm not a dog yeah <laughs> yeah he's Chasing free hot dogs or ladies or something. I don't know. The, the, uh, pie on a windowsill. <laughs> the uh, lyric sheet I'm looking at has a picture of... What? Come on, let's go away. Uh, has a picture of Billy Joel as a dog with uh, sausages around his neck standing oh, yeah. in the cab. <laughs> oh, that's right. He's the Artful Dodger, right? Yeah. So he's like, uh, yeah, he's conned someone out of a string of sausages. Yeah. Or just outright stole them. Probably theft. Yeah. <laughs> Don't see the uh, string of sausages as much as you used to. No, it's true. Yeah, I can't think of the time I have. I haven't have, been in a shop, though. Have you ever bought a string of sausages? No. Yeah, I, I don't like them in string form. No, it's, it's gross. Separate your sausages. Yeah. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Yeah. It's it's not the whatever year that happened. And strings of sausages and one baguette in a bag. <laughs> yeah, that you see. Still see that. You'll see that now and then, yes. But you not what your see, uh, will tell you. This is what you don't see anymore is uh, when people get fired, you don't see the cardboard box with the fern sticking out. <laughs> yeah. When they leave the office. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Most people work from home now. I got fired, Eddie. Yes, it's my fern. <laughs> what happened to all our ferns? Did you pick a fern from out of the office supply cabinet? <laughs> no, no, it's my fern. It is my fern. I brought uh, this from home. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here's your severance. <laughs> right. 25 years and I get a lousy fern. That's a pretty good fern. All right, fair enough. Hardboard box. <laughs> Great. All right. All right. I said woo, 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 woo. I don't remember how that part goes. <laughs> I'm streetwise. I can improvise. I said woo, 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 woo. I'm street smart. I've got New York City heart. <laughs> Not an expression. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it's a thing you can have. Yeah. Is there a word for New York City heart? Hutzpah? Uh, yeah, Hutzpah, um, uh, clogged arteries. <laughs> Violence? I don't know. Right. I do like the use of the word improvise here because yeah. we know what he means, which is nice. It's nice when we, for a story song in a movie, I know exactly what you mean, which is, you're able to, when you're stealing something and you get caught or you're, you're in the middle of a con, you know how to work the system. Right. I don't like this as a movie device, this song, where he's, the character is just singing at you who he is. Yeah. You know, show, don't tell. Yeah. This is all telling. Maybe one of the reasons this particular movie isn't on high on the list of successful Disney. I honestly think this might have been 
a movie that came out in whatever the opposite of a renaissance is for Disney <laughs> when the yeah. animations was that part of the studio was dying off. Uh huh. They were cutting animators because the animation, by the way, in the movie is very TV level quality. It's fine. Yeah, it's not great. But however many frames per minute, it ain't many. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it's like a flip book. Yeah. And they got, I do like the, the whole thing of getting stars to be in a movie. And you got Billy Joel, which is kind of cool. Sure, I guess. In uh, when was this? 1988. Yeah. Cool. And you were looking for, I don't know. Well, the, actually, it's a good pick because hopefully the dads will have liked the movie. <laughs> right, the right. Kids, it's actually a smart move, really. Right. They're like, what kind of dads would bring to their kids to uh, an animated remake of a uh, Dickens novel? Yes. Ah, uh, Long Islanders. <laughs> Why should I, you know, why should I worry? Why should I care? I may not have a dime, but I got street savoir faire, which nobody will accept as currency. So you still have a problem. Right. It'll get you something, but not uh, goods or services. Yeah. You're going to have to con a lady dog who has money. Right. Which I think probably happens in the movie. I'm sure it happens, yeah. A version of that. Yeah. Bribed with sausages. The other thing I like, by the way, in all Disney movies, I like it, in, and I bet this happens in Oliver and Company, is the scene towards the end where all, you know, where the artful Dodger comes into a nice house he now lives in because he got adopted, and there's a <laughs> nice lady dog there, and then a hundred puppies run in. Oh, yeah. And we're and we're all supposed to ignore the plot point of they've been fucking. <laughs> they should show it. Yeah, show, don't tell. Or yeah. <laughs> they should show it. <laughs> Man, that's what the guy from Long Island says. His one complaint. <laughs> they didn't show it. <laughs> Cover your ears, Timmy. Why didn't they show the fucking? Why didn't they show the dogs doing that weird humping thing where one of them stuck for a while? <laughs> that's appealing to watch <laughs> oh. for some reason that's when they really invested some money in the animation because they you know what they <laughs> want to get that right <laughs> oh i also there's oh, a, there's the behind the scenes thing you know how lion king they'll go well we watched real lions and how they walk to get an idea right. <laughs> they did that for that part yeah we looked at a lot of uh, ring doorbell footage of dogs fucking on lawns. Uh, how they react to the hose. So we really got that down. <laughs> oh, why should I worry? Why should I care? It's just bee population. And I got street savoir faire. I think bee population is just in there to embarrass me, to make me feel embarrassed by saying it. The population. Oh. That does capture one Billy Joelism pretty good because it's a word and an expression no one ever uses. <laughs> yeah. That's true. The population. And the song's not bebop. That always bugs me. Yeah, that's a problem. I always find that annoying. As a youth, when I was a young fellow, there's a song called We Built This City. Oh, yeah. Uh huh. And they built this city on rock and roll, and it always bugged me because I was like, yeah, but this song ain't the ain't rock and roll. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that bugged me too at the time. You know, I don't know yeah. what this song is, but it, this is shitty pop. <laughs> well, the, you know, the rock and roll was just the foundation. Yeah, someone's always playing. No. Uh, <laughs> and I like how deep in the pocket of your your publishing company and of the record label you are and you're talking about corporation games oh shut up <laughs> the uh the rock and roll in, the, in that case is like the indian graveyard yeah. they built the city on it <laughs> so it's like they're haunted by rock and roll but they can't perform it that's right elvis is... oh yeah let's be right <laughs> i stole this too 
<laughs> Damn it. Oh my goodness. The rhythm of the city, but once you got it down, I don't like that already. That, that doesn't make sense. What's the yeah. but? Yeah. The rhythm of the city, I have a problem with it. You haven't said that. But once you get it down, then you can own this town. And I don't like these three rhymes because you weren't doing that before. Yeah. But once you get it down, then you can own this town. You can wear the crown. It's just such a breakup of what you did before lyrically. I don't like that. I don't like it. It's not clever or good. Uh, and it's uh, it's hacky. That legitimately bugs me. Look at look at that. You look at the two before and, and pay attention to the shape, guys. If there's anything <laughs> in this show you should know is that Alex and I are interested in shape. The shape is good. The shape is fine. And then you do this nonsense. Downtown crown. No good. If you're going to triple rhyme, do something clever in the middle. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. If it was a interesting, uh, it's not, that's not good. Yeah. I will, we'll get past it by saying, sure, I agree. Thematically, you can wear the crown. Yes, it's a real blemish. Yeah. And then you do the next two because you're just repeating one. Why should I worry? Tell me. Why should I care? I said I may not have a dime, but I got street savoir faire. Okay, I do like something in here, and I didn't notice it until I told you to do two. I was like, I like the tell me. <laughs> tell me. Tell me why should I care? Because it makes it more... Well, it makes it clear, obviously, in the story, he's probably telling a young lady, hey, you should hang out with me, or he's telling the little orphan or whatever, <laughs> but he's now pleading with him, why? Why should I worry? I like that part. Yes. I wonder if he's being encouraged to worry or being told that he can't live like this. Yeah. yeah. Um. Also, by the way, you don't have a dime. That's why. That's why you should worry. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll do another one. Why should I worry? Why should I care? It's just do population. And I got streets have warfare. Oh. Buddy. Do bop? That's not anything. Do bop's not a genre. Is it? Um, yes, it is. You can't say do population. Do population would have been so good, actually. Do population. It would have fit Billy Joel too. Do yeah. population, a thing he loves. He actually did. Oh. I don't Horrid. like it. Horrid. Now I like it even less because you thought of do do population. I'm like, that's that's, actually, that's pretty good. <laughs> now here's the part where briefly they remind you. This is a musical. Right. And this is the part that bugs me. I like it, except that it's not here long enough for it to be worthwhile. A group of people, I'm assuming dogs and or cats, go, everything goes, everything fits. Oh, yeah. What? Fine. Where were you idiots before? <laughs> Why yeah. are we briefly interrupting the damn song? What? What are you here for? It's to set up a rhyme. Everything goes. Everything fits. That's something you would write for, well, for your show, Seth or Colbert, if you were like, let's make fun of musicals tonight. Yeah. Are they snapping in the background? Oh, like they... That's the feeling I get. Yeah, they should be, right? Everything goes, everything fits. Oh, furious. <laughs> they, they love me at the Chelsea. They adore me at the Ritz. What did you do at the Ritz that they don't like you quite as much? <laughs> <laughs> also, not many people fit in at both of those places. No. Chelsea Hotel was what, Sid and Nancy? Yeah. It might be Patty Smith, all of whom would have been kicked out of the Ritz. Yeah, would think. Although now, yeah, now 
equivalent. Now it's as expensive to stay at the Chelsea. Probably <laughs> at Ritz. Well, maybe he fits in both because when you have, you know, do population. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's like currency. Yeah. Yeah. Not as good as having a dime, but still. I'll take the dime. Uh, all right, my friend, it's you. Take us home. Why should I worry? Why should I care? Even when I cross that line. What? I got street savoir faire. What line? Man, that means, because that can only mean he's done something horrid. He's going to get me too Yeah. Uh, that only, yeah, that can only mean he did something really bad. I hope it's just sausage theft. Yeah. I'll bet it is. Let me look what, let me see what the next song is. Believe All Women. Ooh, oh, they're probably <laughs> <looking> pretty bad. <laughs> we got, I watched this movie now. It's, yeah. it's Weinstein. I do like, by the way, that I, we didn't do this on purpose, but you exclusively were inquiring as to why we should or should not worry in the analysis. I'm always looking for new reasons. <laughs> <laughs> why should I worry? I have some ideas, but I could use more. I have so many ideas. This is going to be a long meeting. Oh, oh you guys. <laughs> Get the whiteboard. And then it ends with woo. So much woo. Yeah. So, I like the woo. I'll say that again because it's a Billy Joel move. Yes. It's it's a doo -woppy. Yep. And it's, less Broadway. Yeah, and, and definitely not beboppy. Not so beboppy. Yeah. I I dug that. The whole lyric as far as Billy Joel singing it, they knocked it out of the park as far as the arrangement, as far as the things they have him do vocally. And then yeah. even the lyrics are he's written a ton of songs that are way better about New York. Yeah. Couldn't you have asked? I wonder, did they even think about asking him to write it? Or did he just say no? Yeah, I feel like they probably just handed it to him fully formed. Yeah, which seems like a mistake in a way. Yeah. You would want the guy to work on it a little bit. Yeah. Maybe he did. Maybe he's like, I'll put in some street names for you guys. <laughs> You've clearly never been here. Oh, that's pretty funny. If that was the part he was like, there just need to be more more things mentioned. Need, need more landmarks. I know a guy. <laughs> we'll get Billy Joel on it. He knows I... so many streets. Yeah, that's his thing, man. <laughs> they just had like the numbered streets in there. Oh, Lord, which so they've done. Up Avenue to Second Avenue <laughs> and up to 43rd. <laughs> Like, you know what would be better? <laughs> Say one, Mark. One whole named word. Oh, Lord. I don't hate this song. I am going to make a goal for myself and see if I can do it this week. I'm going to try to watch that movie. Oh, nice. Yeah. You I'm don't not going to do that. Do, yeah. I'm not going to do that. You're going to be in Chicago. It'll be much more fun to, for you to tell me about the movie. Actually, that would be pretty fun. <laughs> I'm tempted to make that what the next episode's about. <laughs> uh, but no. Alex. Alex. <laughs> Alex. Jim tells Alex about songs that have Billy Joel songs but not lyrics in them. Um, episode Mo one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Shiza, that's pretty great. Welcome to the slaughterhouse. Uh all right, uh, I'm going to tell you, we'll do the other things first, but I want to tell you what I want to talk about next week. Uh -huh. we'll get back to normal lyrics. I want us to listen to his classical album and talk about it. <laughs> the whole thing? No, that sounds awful. Sorry, I wouldn't do that to you. <laughs> Whatever the first cut is. Huh? I, got a, I got a lot of stuff I got to do around the house next week. I'll put it on in the background. We'll talk about it. Let's talk about Billy Joel's classical album. And this is not... Ancient Delusions, Volume 1? Yeah. There's never I, been a Volume 2, right? I am such a fan of the Volume... 
the things that are named numerically, but the others don't exist. Yeah. Now, is that true of like uh, rock and roll part one, the Gary Glitter song? I think that's true of that too. Yeah. I not have another part. I uh, I thought of an idea for Mambo number six. Oh, great. Here's what it's about. It's a very sad song. Oh, no. Uh, and it starts out, a little bit of Rita in my life, a little bit of Rita in my life. A little... And it fades out. And it's just this lament about Rita was the one. Oh, no. And because he was such a player and he couldn't see the forest for the trees, he's now lonely, old. And what could have been? I could have had a family. Rita loved me. But there I was being a player. And it's just very sad. But it's a mambo. Still it's mambo. Ma yeah, it's mambo number six. That's the sixth mambo. <laughs> Great. Let's analyze that. No, no. Uh, <laughs> all right. On ourselves. This one's pretty easy. Uh, California baseball. <laughs> Is that a song? Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a lyric. No, that's not it. But that's not a bad guess. But uh, you notice. Uh, what do I notice? Uh, well, third base. There are, there's at least three guys on base. Oh, yeah. The bases are loaded. Uh, and, uh, oh, man. <laughs> you're, very, you're very close. Are you feeling tense because you're trying to think of it? Yeah, yeah. How would no. you describe that feeling? Uh, frustrating. And what else? Come on, get it. Well, how does this feel when I'm I'm haranguing you to get the answer? It was like pressure. That's right, baby. <laughs> uh, well, so, the bases are yeah, three men uh, uh three men on and two men out. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. So now look at that perfectly nice American pastoral image. Yep. Yep. Here's what I looked. Here's what I asked Google for. I asked for three men on, two men out. <laughs> and you got porn. And in a way, I got that. There were men who were out. Okay. And there were men that were on. <laughs> <laughs> there was a wide variety, too. Just... Was it all porn? Yeah. No baseball at all? No. <laughs> you might have a weird filter set or something. <laughs> it seems at least you should have gotten a mix. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and now the solution, the solution uh -huh. turned out, other than cover my eyes, was uh, bases loaded. Oh, that cleared it up. It did. They, I got no porn. Huh. And you would think there would at least be one porn of a guy who drops his load on bases. Yeah, you would think. But no, three men on, two men out. It was just ridiculous. No, oh, I might duplicate your experiment. <laughs> Let me see right now. All right. Hold on. Don't go anywhere. And remember, you want to click the thing that says images after you do that, so you're getting images. Do I, though? Uh, no. I'm getting a lot of posters for three men and a baby. Okay, you have a weirder filter than me. <laughs> I might have a filter on it. <laughs> I, I'm, You know what? I'm happier with my results. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Three men out. I got a book called Three Men Out. Okay. Picture of three men hanging out but ignoring each other. Yeah, I'm going to scroll down. Still nothing. Oh, there's some naked guys. All right. The... Every gay man should try a thruple once. Okay. Probably, that's probably true. Because... Yeah, no, it's pretty clean over here. It was exclusive. I scrolled down to go, well, maybe the baseball is later. I don't know, man. 
Yeah. Three Were you on and Chrome? Was it Chrome or Safari? Let's see. It is uh, okay. Chrome. Chrome. Okay. Maybe Chrome is filthy. I'm on Safari. All right. I'm behind the times. <laughs> Just, and again, yeah, you know, come on. You knew that's what I wanted. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty clear. Even if you're going to give porn, you should give yeah. the baseball first. Yeah, baseball first. That's the usual order of things, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, you go to the baseball game, and then you do the throttle. <laughs> and you watch the porn. Yeah. Uh, hey, man, what was the first uh, Billy Joel song for which he received a Grammy for Song of the Year? Just the Way You Are. That's correct. Look how good you did. Damn, I nailed that. And I did not know it ahead of time. Very nice. You deduced. I, yes. And that's, I like that question a lot because first of all, good job on the question. Thanks, bud. The thing that made that question great is without knowing it, if you at least know enough about Billy Joel's discography, you could go, well, what would have been one of the first songs where people would have recognized his songwriting even if the general public hadn't quite caught on yet. Right. And it would have been a ballad. Yep. And it would have been the mid-70s. Yep. Yeah. I don't think that's ever happened on our show, by the way, where I got <laughs> that. The first time you really nailed it. I even had something I don't normally have, which was confidence in the answer. That's true. You really slung that. <laughs> <laughs> don't Google that, by the way. Well, you... <laughs> <laughs> Jim slung it. Oh God! Oh, it's all guys named Jim and Thropples. That's a <laughs> weird sub category. <laughs> oh Lord! Well, now we talked about what we're, we said what we're going to talk about, which we're going to talk oh. about cla the classical album. It'll be the first time I've ever listened to it. Same. Yeah. Yeah, I'm very curious to see if it sounds like him. Yeah. And I'm tempted to get the vinyl because I think it would be neat to own it. Probably. Because I have a record player. It would actually be kind of cool to own it. I need to get a record player. And you're in Chi-Town, right? This weekend, yes. So we, you might not be able to record next week. Hard to say. I mean, so, I'll be fine. Huh? Oh, okay, cool. I'll be back. No, I'm so just saying good. I have time to acquire this record and listen to it. Oh, yeah. That'd actually just be fun because I like going to record stores anyway. It's a thing to do when you're this age. Yeah. Yeah. So I told Alex, but you were, you were, I'd say you're high up there is one of my favorite things about New York. Oh, man. You know, I just enjoyed the time we spent together. It was great. Oh, I love um, like showing people the city, and you were so like for it. You're oh, just love, yeah. Love, you were love. charming, and you were fun to be with. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I will. You have a new place. I have to come back. <laughs> She's leaving. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say something to make her mad? She left. She's taking, she's taking the fern. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, tied it together perfectly. Good night, everybody. <laughs>